Hi, Dr. Jeremy Heyman here at Cornerstone Naturopathic, and today we're going to continue our anti-cancer talk about anti-cancer foods, and the second food that we're going to talk about actually isn't so much of a food as it is a, a drink. Well, technically a plant, but uh, once prepared and uh, consumed, is consumed, consumed as a drink, uh, green tea. So everyone knows, has heard, everyone has heard of green tea, everyone knows a little bit about green tea maybe, and hopefully by this point, uh, most people know that there are significant health benefits to green tea, not just in the cancer uh, realm or the scope of cancer, but uh, outside of that as well, as far as like anti-inflammatory or inflammatory modulating properties, um, antioxidant qualities and benefits, and in relation to um, uh, chronic disease, uh, very, very beneficial in that scope. So we won't get too much in that, into that, but let's start talking a bit more about green tea. Green tea, as some of you may know as well, is the most commonly grown um, type of tea in the world. So that's why it's so well known across, uh, across the planet. Uh, I always make sure that my green tea is organic, uh, regardless of what type of green tea that I'm consuming or drinking. And I only say that because it just sort of eliminates the, you know, the possibility or probability of, uh, you know, potential issues with sourcing and uh, um, uh, pesticides and chemicals and that type of thing. So I don't even want to worry about that. And there's less of a chance of that um, when you consume or source uh, an organic version. So. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about constituents and polyphenols and phytochemicals because when it comes to green tea, that's kind of where the uh, where the emphasis is in terms of anti-cancer properties. So I've talked a little bit in the past about um, uh, phytochemicals and uh, polyphenols and flavonoids and such, but essentially um, polyphenols and constituents and phytochemicals are all all um, present in, in plants in the entire plant world and polyphenols are actually a specific category of phytochemicals. And as a bit of a side note, um, I think there's been about 25,000 or just over 25,000 uh, various types of phytochemicals that have already been identified in the plant world. So through um, like fruits and vegetables and herbs and other plants, and all of those 25,000 plus phytochemicals may actually have potential or multiple potential anti-cancer benefits. So. That's why the value and importance of uh, eating your greens and green vegetables um, is, is hugely important. So when it comes to polyphenols, polyphenols, um, yeah, so a category of phytochemicals, and they're essentially like a secondary metabolite of the plants that are involved in the defense mechanism of the plant. So um, in times of stress, like I mentioned in a previous video, polyphenols are there to help sort of, uh, you know, uh, encourage longevity and health uh, of plants when there is sort of environmental stress and when, when humans consume these plants, it passes on these polyphenols and phytochemicals and we're actually able to take advantage um, of the health benefits of them. So specifically with green tea, so uh, GTP, so GTP is short form for green tea polyphenols and that sort of falls into the category in terms of where a lot of the anti-cancer benefits are. So. I'm not really a proponent of uh, consuming, you know, green tea as like a individual um, standardized extract necessarily. I like to get the full plethora of uh, constituents and uh, healthy chemicals in plants. So that's why I love teas. I love tinctures. Um, but you know what the studies have been showing is they've been studying uh, EGCG, which is uh, one specific polyphenol. So out of all of the the plants and constituents and, uh, and phytochemicals when it comes to cancer and uh, cancer support and treatment or anti-cancer benefits, green tea and the EGCG and the GTP, which is the uh, green tea polyphenols, that's really where the emphasis and, uh, and focus has been, uh, been spent and largely uh, some great benefit in terms of its uh, anti-cancer properties. So yeah, so definitely largely, largely studied. That being said, still very controversial in science, but Definitely when it comes to natural medicine, when it comes to food um, and science um, from a, a literature perspective and scientific perspective, supports a little bit more complex in terms of the conventional science um, and, you know, and conventional medicine being able to accept it. So it's kind of like uh, trying to fit a, uh, a square peg in a circular uh, hole. So not quite as, not quite as easy. So um, green tea specifically when it comes to uh, cancer and cancer benefits, uh, has shown lower risk of various cancers, so a whole variety of uh, cancers. And actually those that, um, that are diagnosed with cancers, they've shown that people that actually drink uh, more green tea um, have a longer onset um, of being diagnosed. So where someone would be diagnosed um, at a certain point, those that drink green tea 
um, they don't actually develop uh, cancer um, until later later on, so whether it's months or years or what have you. So definitely very beneficial uh, there. Um, and those in the category who are already diagnosed with cancer, especially a variety of cancers in stage one and two, the actual recurrence rate um, with consuming green tea was also greatly and is also greatly reduced. So a lot of good stuff. A recent study showed that GTP, so the green tea polyphenols, can influence uh, the pathological roles of not only cancer cells themselves, so how these cancer cells um, are attacked or killed, but also the cancer stem cells, which is huge because the majority of conventional cancer treatments, so chemotherapies and radiation, for example, um, they're really, really good most times at killing the cancer cells, but when you kill the cancer cells, you're not able to kill the stem cells, and the stem cells, um, from a cancer's perspective, actually become stronger, and the growth factors become stronger. So that's why a lot of times where someone, when someone's put into remission, when their cancer treatment is successful, later on they develop the cancer again, or secondary cancer, because those stem cells come back with, uh, with a vengeance, and they're hard to, um, they're hard to, to attack um, using conventional uh, medicine and conventional cancer treatment. So um, combination with conventional cancer treatments uh, with respect to green tea, also proving to be very beneficial, but obviously talk to, um, talk to a naturopath, an integrative uh, doctor or a medical professional before you're actually going to um, introduce any type of green tea or green tea dosing um, into any active conventional or alongside any active conventional treatments. Uh, green tea, um, you can consume it in many ways. So obviously you can consume it uh, just as a regular loose leaf tea, uh, powder, there's extracts, capsules, different very variety of supplements. Um, steeping tea, green tea is best. So if you're using any type of tea, uh, powder form or a loose leaf form, um, the constituents are pulled out better when it's uh, steeped or in warm water or hot water. Um, but if it's as an extract or a capsule, um, then, um, then it's okay because it's already been pre-extracted. So that's, uh, that's all right. And what else do I want to say about green tea? If you're not consuming it already, um, definitely uh, start consuming it uh, today. And the studies have actually shown um, a couple cups of green tea a day up to about uh, 10 cups of green tea a day is where you really start to see the benefits. So the more the better. I don't know if I mentioned caffeine yet. Um, there is caffeine in green tea, so if you're caffeine sensitive, just be reminded that the level of caffeine in green tea is quite low. So there's about 25 milligrams of caffeine per eight ounce uh, cup of green tea. Now comparing that to coffee, in coffee there's about 125, 130 milligrams, give or take or so, in every cup of uh, coffee, depending on the strength and such. So a lot less uh, in green tea. Coffee and green tea both have uh, some significant anti-cancer benefits and uh, um, phytochemical nutritional properties, uh, but green tea by far uh, definitely uh, a winner in terms of uh, um, anti-cancer benefits. So drink your green tea, start drinking green tea. If you have questions about how to start, how much to drink, uh, how to get it, uh, how to steep it, let me know. Uh, but definitely uh, start drinking your green tea because the benefits with cancer and showing off how it cuts cancer off, how it shuts the, uh, the growth factors of cancer, the blood supply to cancer, the nutritional supply to cancer is just fantastic. And still the science is not verified 100%, but there's enough science, enough evidence out there to say if you're looking to prevent cancer, to treat cancer or reduce your rate of recurrence, green tea by far is uh, definitely a must as far as our anti-cancer foods. Perfect. Thanks very much and uh, we'll see you on the next one.